Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to explore how young women's procreative drive is fueling the global revolution. Okay, um, ordinarily our shows are about um, explaining why free will is an illusion or a myth or a mistaken deduction. Um, and uh, so um, this show is going to be a little different. Um, and um, this, this show, like, we're going to kind of like trace what, what, um, what I believe or predict is, um, is, is uh, an important unrecognized element in this, in this revolution, you know, the, the Occupy Revolution, the uh, Arab Awakening, um, you know, what's going on in the world, this, this global revolution. Okay, um, and that basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, try to um, present a um, convincing um, rationale, set of reasons, set of causes, or, or causal, causal um, mechanism that, that's at play, but it's at play, um, I think, under the radar of most people. Okay, here's the thing. For um, human beings have been around for what? four or five million years, I don't know. They, they keep on finding an older, you know, ancestor. There was Lucy and a few others. Um, so for those, like, you know, for those four or five million years, um, I'm guessing, but, you know, I think, like, um, to the extent that adolescence was still at around 13 or so, young women were at the age of 13, 14, and 15, um, they were ready for biologically, and they, um, for these millions, th several million years, began to um, have families at that time. That was like the natural order. There was, in other words, back, you know, throughout these four million, five million years, there was no compelling reason to, uh, to postpone child rearing, um, um, procreation, okay? Um, but then, like, then, you know, we, we began to um, become more civilized, and it's, you know, been wonderful in many ways. Um, we, um, we began to, to value education so that um, young women were encouraged by society, by their parents, by whomever, to delay child raising. And this, you know, I'm talking about, like, mainly the developed countries like the United States and Europe and all, like, in some of the, um, you know, less developed parts of the world, Asia, Africa, South America, I think it does still hold more so to the way it's been for million year, uh, you know, for several million years. But yeah, but so like, because of um, our valuing education, seeing the value of it, we had um, basically um, pretty successfully convinced a lot of women to, to delay procreation until after they graduate high school. Okay, and then um, then um, college educations became much more um, important, you know, to our personal um, personal lives, um, you know, society, and so then you know women were kind of like encouraged to de again delay their procreation from 18 to let's say 22 um, when they graduated. But even that was more than that, because then like you know. Most people, I don't think, find a mate while they're in school. They usually wait to um, till they graduate. So, so then at 22, then you have women having to find um, a mate and um, and begin, you know, the whole process. You know, getting married, or whatever, in, in this society. Um, and then, you know, this is not, you know, actually, a lot of this Occupy Revolution is by also people with advanced degrees, you know, post-graduate. Um, and so that, that way you're going from 22 to, let's say, 26, the age of 26. You know, and then you got to realize, you know, like, what, they're, what women are up against biologically, you know, the, the um, time. You know, basically a woman um, <coughs> is wisest, it's health, healthiest to, to begin having children at no later than 30. I think that's probably the... the um, current advice. I mean, certainly women in their 40s and 50s have 
and can have first children, but generally speaking, it's, um, you know, around 30 is, is that, you know, the time when you really should be having your first child. So, so now let's get to the, um, what's happening with the um, global economy. 2006, we had the, the meltdown. We had, um, you know, the, the great um, recession that, that now seems to, to a certain extent kind of like a depression, you know, in some, some ways. But you, have, you don't have jobs for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, whether it's the woman who doesn't have the job or the man who doesn't have the job, let's say, in, with a couple, sometimes it just doesn't really matter because in today's world, for the kind of values that we've conditioned young women to have, expectations of life and all, for a lot of women, you know, getting by on one salary just is something that they would just not consider um, possible, you know. Um, so, all right, so, and that's, that's, that's where we are now. Um, you've got a lot of women that, um, that are 25, 30, 35, and they're saying to themselves, wait a minute, we've got 1% of the population who, um, they don't have a free will, so it's not their fault, but because of their greed and selfishness and indifference, because they want so much regardless of, of anything, um, that I'm, I'm not going to be able to have kids or, I'm, or like, you know, that I have to wait. And, you know, because like, you know, with, with this economy, who knows? I mean, you know, they say it might take a couple of years, it might take four years, whatever. So, all right, but the basics, so that, this is the, um, this is the causal sequence. This is a, a, something that is at, at play here. Now, naturally, naturally, there are many, many other factors at play. You know, there's just young young kids who, um, who believe it's their basic right in this society that, that you can't, you know, in this society you can't go out and be a farmer generally, you know, not if you're born in, in Manhattan or New York City or whatever. Um, we, we're a collective society. We're, we're dependent for our survival on the institutions we create, you know, on our society. We can't make it on our own anymore. So like when to, to a young kid who's 18, 20, I mean, this is more about the women and all, but, you know, again, um, for them to, to know that there's really no jobs for them and, like, you know, they may have older brothers and, like, you know, to realize that the, 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 the economy is structured so, so much against them, um, you know, I think they finally realize that it's just not fair. But, all right, so getting back to the women. Um, so... Well, I've basically, I've basically presented the, the entire thesis on this, just that, um, you know, you're, you're not dealing with just like the, the um, materialistic ambitions of, of, a, of a population, a world population that, um, that needs jobs, that needs to, you know, that has ambitions, has, you know, materialistic ambitions also, although those kind may not be sustainable in the, in the world which we're creating, which is all right, because, you know, probably be for the best. But um, you've got also these, these biological um, mechanisms, this, the, the stuff that's working in the background that no, nobody really thinks about. But this, this, for like with the women, you know, um, okay, um, a lot of it, what affects our behavior are, um, can be understood biologically, psychologically as drives. And, and they're, they're biological in a sense because a lot are, are controlled by hormones um, and other neurotransmitters that, um, that basically, you know, um, relate to our physical state. And in the case of women, relate to the fact that they are, you know, mature, um, ovulating, and, you know, ready to conceive. Um, and so, like, that's the thing. Um, it's not just, it, it, it's this fundamental biological time clock within women that, um, that to my reasoning, um, means that, you know, again, um, I mean, I, I've considered the revolution pretty much won um, when over 700 protesters got arrested um, on the Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, you know, that was just like, you know, if, if Bloomberg um, really wanted to help out the revolution, I'm not sure he could have done more than that. I mean, that was, that was 
But um, but you know, notwithstanding that, for for people who think that um, that you know this isn't over, you know that it's not just playing out, um, consider this um, this factor, this this women's procreate pro, excuse me procreative factor. Um, women in in um, the developed nations like the United States and Europe are um, are educated. And um, they're accustomed to certain rights, certain standards of, 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 of society, standards for themselves, for, you know, um, that, that women, for example, in less developed countries do not have as much of as an advantage. In other words, they, have, they may have less education, um, less access to education. Um, so they may have lower expectations because of the, you know, well, because of living in a, you know, in a poor um, country or society. But, but these women, you know, these women in, in um, developed countries, they, um, they have been conditioned um, to expect, um, to expect to, to be able to raise a family. And, and when you consider, some people consider the procreative drive the fundamental human drive. I mean, I, I talk about like happiness being the basic reason why we do whatever we do. And naturally, you know, procreating is going to make us happy. Um, but, but a lot of times we will like prefer to procreate and live in unhappiness than not procreate. And um, that's kind of like based on, I guess, a prediction that that unhappiness or that less happiness um, well, maybe perhaps be rewarded in the afterlife, you know, as, as a good um, thing to have done, or then it, in one's life in the future, whatever. But, um, but yeah, think about this. Um, the, um, you have a biological drive and process in human beings and women that, um, you know, you probably haven't heard this this thesis from anyone. This is, you know, this is, um, you know, you probably haven't considered. I mean, maybe you have. Um, maybe maybe um, <coughs> writers are writing about this. I mean, it, it is a, a general theme. It is a general theme in the sense that um, that the young people today, you know, throughout all um, the various countries, they um, they feel like that the older generation, especially the one percenters, have stolen their future. You know. Um, and part of that is sto stolen their, you know, procreative future, their, their, their right, and the, um, the reasonableness of expecting that, um, that, you know, they can have these kids and raise families and just do what, what um, past generations um, did. So, um, so yeah, but um, so, so you may have, you know, kind of like heard this, this topic addressed within that context. But um, but I just am kind of like cueing you in on on you know an aspect of that you know related to young women and related to to I think maybe maybe the most fundamental drive you know the procreation. Okay, um, we're 13 minute mark, and I, I think I've talked about this enough. And well, actually, there's an interesting aside. Interesting aside. Um, I tend I'm a scientist former first and foremost, but I was. I'm Jewish. I, I practiced Orthodox Judaism for several years, and it was very cool. It didn't really suit my personality because, like, there are so many like rules and laws and stuff. I mean, very cool stuff. But anyway, um, one of the um, one of the teachings that I'm not sure um, it's in the Torah, it's in the Mishnah Agamor. I don't know. Um, one of the teachings that I learned that was that when the Messiah comes, and you know. In in uh, should I get into this? All right, in Judaism, like the traditional Messiah is supposed to be this guy. It's a guy who um, who comes and you know brings all the Jews back to Israel, you know, and they build a third temple and all this stuff. I don't think that's going to happen. I, but but there's also the idea of the messianic era of not just a guy happening, but just like the world becoming so much better. And um, one of the statements that I remember reading is like that, you know, in this new world, this messianic era, we will do right um, 
without having to learn right. You know, like we will just be so in touch with it. You know, I guess there's a process maybe, you know, because you have to think if we can identify right from wrong, if we can realize it, then there has to be kind of like a, um, well, no, no, that gets complicated. But, um, okay. Ah, I gotta take a break. Sorry, we got 11 minutes. Um, basically, no, I, I have forgotten my thought, my, my train of thought again. I'm very, um, very sensitive. I think I heard a, a sound outside, or whatever, and like, you know, this is, a, it's kind of like I'm, I'm playing um, a piano or something, and like, I'm so like, you know, sensitized to, to this, um, this, you know, this thing, this, this kind of like, um, experience that I'm trying to create because I, I really am trying to you know I'm trying to teach you know you the the nature of your human will and how human will relates to um to for example the Occupy movement but um but um but you know this um I don't know I'm losing my train again I explained um explained last show um last show how you know I'm just like tired. <laughs> it's been a long time. All right. Um, okay. Again, you have um, you have women who um, who've been you know who've been told, oh no, put it off. Wait, you know, get your education. And also, that that it's not. It doesn't stop just with the, uh, the education. You know, young women today have also been told, wait a minute. Um, it's not just about getting your 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 BA or master's or PhD, or whatever. It's about, you know, then getting a good job. So it's not, you know, so it's 22, 26, then four years, like you know, between 26 and 30, to to you know, to have um, this this mating and, and procreation happen. You know, that's like, I'm telling you, it's um, it's a very oh, I'm sorry, I I'd lost my train of thought, but it just get, came back to me. It was about the idea of like the messianic era where people were all supposed to uh, do what's what's right, without having learned it, you know. And so one of the um, one of the factors, one of the other um, statements that I learned, and again, you know, they, um, I don't want to put too much into this because like basically, you know. Religion in general, tradition, religion, Judaism, Christianity, it's based on just like, you know, something's true because somebody said it. But sometimes some people have, you know, whether it's intuition or whatever, they have access to, to stuff that actually becomes true and all. So what I'm trying to say is like, um, one of the statements that I read um, in Torah was that they said that when the Messi Messianic era comes, that um, the world will be run by women. Okay, in the Messianic era, the world's going to be run by women. So, um, so I'm thinking, you know, like with this, with this revolution that's happening, it's happening primarily by young people, again, fueled, in my opinion, to a, to a great extent by women who um, are going to protect their right to, to procreate and to have healthy families. Um, I think maybe it's because of that that women will, will come to the, to the fore of this revolution, that women will be at the forefront, and, and I guess I'm predicting that they will um, create kind of like a society, hopefully a global society, that has, you know, procreation and child raising and you know the family you know the 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 welfare and health of, of not just american families but families throughout the entire world as the fundamental consideration um it's hard to say whether that kind of perspective is um much well i don't know what the research on, on this is um i read a long time ago that um the major difference between women and men is that men tend to be um, much more aggressive, but it, it actually might turn out that um, that women, because they're so much more involved in in child raising and procreation and all that than men, um, will be much more focused on that aspect of life as the essential aspect of life. I mean, 
and I guess we guys have, have had as our main focus, I think more like conquering the environment and then kind of like conquering each other through the, you know, through the, uh, the mechanism of capitalism, you know, which is like competitive. So I think the reason I say this because like then I, I'm guessing that women would be culturally and maybe biologically more um, more inclined, more more appropriate for the role of, of leadership in this new world. Who knows? All right, so um, we've got about six minutes left, um, six and a half minutes left, and <laughs> I am so glad, wait a minute. Um, yeah, this is the last show I'm doing today, and it's Monday, and um, so, all right, um, what I want to talk about now is that people are getting this. Um, I pretty much, one of the things I do every, um, every evening is I, I go through the YouTube videos um, for new videos on, um, on this question of human will, you know, whether our will is causal or, or free. And, um, and there are some, there's some excellent ones there. Um, and so, but what I'm, what I'm, like for example, there was one la that I was watching last night. This guy, I uploaded. Oh, listen, you know, I might as well like advertise in terms of my Facebook, um, because like I upload these episodes like to Blip TV, okay, and then they're available through my website, ca uh, causalconsciousness.com. But then like, you know, there's more about like causality and Occupy and all on my on my Facebook page. So anyway, if you want to friend me, you know, George Ortega, Facebook, whatever. And, um, and so you, you'll see this, you know, you can, um, you can, I, I upload these, these, um, YouTube videos of other people kind of like describing why free will is an illusion to my Facebook page. So, you know, you can see them there. And I think what I may do is actually start compiling, like this guy's was, um, that I saw last night, it was a seven minute video and he so well described how, like, why if God is omniscient, if God knows everything, then God knows the future, then that make what makes free will impossible because God can't know what you're going to do in advance without his having willed what you're doing in advance. And then when, you know, I mean, with the, the, the reason I don't address the theological question so much because, like, the whole concept of, let's say, an omnipotent God, an all-powerful God, <laughs> really, um, curiously, I mean, like, doesn't stand up to, to reason because like, you know, there, I mean, you're, you're all familiar with this, um, this um, challenge that says, well, if God would, you know, is all powerful, can he create a rock so big that even he can't, can't lift it? And, and naturally, you know, if he can, then that shows that he's you know, not powerful enough. So, you know, you get the logic of that. So, um, so yeah, so, um, so check out, yeah, check out my, my website for these videos. And I, I think I am going to um, bring them into, um, I'm going to create episodes with them, you know, like I'll, I'll, you know, just present them on there. I've got to get their permission to do this, and I hopefully I'll be able to do that. Okay, we've got about four minutes left. Um, what else? Okay, the basic reason why free will is impossible is because everything has a cause. Because if everything has a cause, every one of our decisions has a cause. Again, if everything has a cause, then the cause of our decision must also have a cause. And that cause must also have a cause. Okay, and think about it, these causes are always going back in time. A cause is, is happening, let's say, a moment before its effect. So then you have a prior cause happening a moment before that, and a prior cause happening before that. Because again, nothing ha can happen without be being caused. And so that, you know, you follow this chain of cause and effect, you know, causes, preceding causes, preceding causes, back into the future. Uh, all of a sudden, the moments turn into minutes, turn into hours, turn into days, weeks, months, years, and you have this causal chain that ultimately determines our decision, having, you know, stretching back to before we were born. Okay. That is the reason 
we have a causal will. That's the reason reality is causal. Everything that happens, happens according to cause and effect. Um, yeah, that means that we're, it's, everything's a movie. It's surreal, it's amazing. Um, to me, it's like beyond wonderful because like, firstly, the idea that, you know, we've been obviously compelled by the universe to, to believe we have a free will for as long as we have, maybe, who knows, maybe 500 years or so. And now, um, it's equally wonderful that for whatever reason, I think maybe because like, it's an insane perspective, the free will's perspective, that um, the universe is apparently compelling us now to, to understand the true nature of our human will. We have causal wills. Okay. Um, and the other way to understand how our wills are causal is um, anytime we make a decision, <coughs> it has to be based on data. And uh, since our conscious mind can't access all that data, because it, it, it really can only you know, be aware of one or two pieces of information at once, then that means that the, um, the processing of that data in the unconscious has to also be at the level of the unconscious. That's, that's the second, I think, major fundamental way of understanding that, um, that human will is causal. All right, well, <laughs> I'm glad I'm out of here. All right, again, young women's procreative drive is, gonna, is fueling this revolution, and that, that should be good. All right, hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.